All right, so here's another video on the empirical rule. If you just watched my other, my first video on the empirical rule, um, then you don't need this one. This is purely optional. This video is only for those students who either watched the first video and didn't get the hang of it, or for whatever reason, don't want to do it kind of the normal way. Some teachers might demand you do it the normal way. The advantage of doing things the normal way is it's supposed to give you a little bit more intuition towards the subject. I don't know if that's really true. Um, I'm a teacher and I don't really care how you do it. You can use either of these two methods as far as I'm concerned. I usually encourage students to do it this more normal way, the 68, 95, 99.7 way. But I know from experience that some students really struggle trying to learn these. They have a hard time viewing this region as this and this together and understanding why you're dividing numbers and then adding them back together. For some students, they really have a hard time with that. If you're not going to get the hang of this, then do it this way instead. This way, all you have to do is memorize this picture. And that's the downside, right? You have to memorize this picture and these numbers aren't all that nice. But it's not as bad as it appears because of symmetry, right? If you memorize this 34, you kind of get this one for free. You memorize this 13 and a half, you get this one for free. You don't have to memorize 68, 95, 99.7 because those numbers are used to create this picture, right? You can kind of see the 68 in here, 34 plus 34 more. And then from here to here should be 95. So if I've used up 68 from here to here, I need another 27 to get to 95. Half of that 27 is over here and the other half is over here. Whoa, you're throwing a lot of numbers around. You're confusing me. Sorry, my bad. All you got to do is memorize this picture. It's that easy. If you can draw the picture of the question and you have this memorized, the problem just comes down to can you add numbers together? So let me show you an example. Um, let's go back to this one. We actually have already solved these problems. I grabbed a few of the ones from the previous video. We're just going to do them again. First one, the weight of an offensive tackle is approximately normally distributed. That means I draw this picture. Try my best on a computer. The mean is 300. That means that 300 goes right here in the middle. Oh, the mean's not 300. Sorry, the mean's 270. That goes right here in the middle. And then you count up and down by the standard deviation, which in this case is 30. So I add 30 three times, and then I subtract 30 three times. This question asks me what percentage of offensive linemen weigh between 240 and 300 pounds, and as I've already beaten to death, that is equivalent with answering the question, how much area is there underneath this curve between 240 and 300? In other words, find this area right here. Well, let's see. This area kind of takes one region to the left of the middle and one to the right of the middle. It kind of takes this 34 right here and this 34 right here. Can you kind of see how that region maps to there and that region maps there? I ask it like a question, like someone's going to shout back at me and be like, yeah, I get that. Um, add those two numbers up, you're done. This one's 34, this one's 34. 34 plus 34 is 68. 68 is the answer. This area is 68%. And you're like, whoa, you said this was easier. It was easier to figure out 68 in the other video. Sure, I guess for really easy problems, it might be easier to do it the other way. But when you get to trickier problems, like what percentage of offensive linemen weigh more than 240 pounds? Maybe that was one of the ones from the previous video. It's a lot easier to use this method. You recognize that 240 is right here. I don't even need to put in the rest. 210, 180, 300. 330, 360. Uh, maybe we even add a little bit here. What if I do it this way? I'll add these lines to really show where my numbers are coming from. I want this region here. How much area is in that region? Well, if I go back to my map, whoops, up here, 34% is in this region. Another 34 is in this region. 13 and a half, 2.35. And finally, 0 0.15. If you can add up these numbers, that's your answer. So 34 plus 34, whoops, plus 13.5, plus 2.35, plus 0 0.15. Let's see, 2 and a half, 3, 16, and... 68 is 84. Other ways I could have gotten there, but that's fine. Uh, maybe an easier way to get there is you know that these guys all have to be 
and then another 34 get you 84. Anyways, out of a bunch of numbers, you get 84, that's your answer. The point is, if you can just draw the pictures and you have, whoops, still getting the hang of this pen. Uh, these numbers memorized, you're good. Let me do a couple more. Uh, the dog ones, sure, we answered this question. It was hard, we had to break it up into multiple different regions. Let me show you how it's a lot easier now. There's 80 in the middle, and then I got 90, 70, 60. Um, from my picture that presumably I have memorized, I know that this region here is 34, and that this region here is 34, and this region here is 13 and a half. So if I add those three numbers together, uh, 68, 71 and a half, nope, 81 and a half. I think that's 81 and a half. I suppose you could pull out a calculator. That might make life a little bit easier. Those guys, if you add them up, and really shade things in here. Sure. Get you 81 and a half. And 81 and a half, that might look familiar because that was our answer earlier. Don't believe me? Let's see if we can find that problem. Here it is. Remember when you had to take this and this and add those together? We had to divide this by two and yeah, you got 81 and a half. You got the same answer. Maybe it's easier to do them this way. So here's another way you can do these. One last problem, then I'll call this video good. How likely is it that a dog's loudest bark is less than 100 decibels? Well, we just draw our picture again. Sure. Uh, remember that with dog barks, the mean is 80 and the standard deviation is 10. So you got 80. Sorry about that noise. That's my dog drinking water. 90, 100, 110. My dog, the inspiration for this video, because she was barking when I was trying to make these earlier. Uh, less than 100, it's talking about this region over here. So all I gotta do is add up all those numbers. Let's see, this one here is 13 and a half. This next one is 34. This next one is 34. This next one is 13 and a half. And this last one is what, 2.35, I believe. Double check from our original picture, which presumably you have memorized. This is 2.35. Oh, and then I got 0 0.15. I guess there's two more. 2.35 and 0 0.15. And you add up all these numbers and you get 97 and a half, I think. Um, and you can double check that. I pull out a calculator, right? Add up those numbers. I don't have to show you how to type numbers into a calculator. And you should get 97 and a half. So that's the answer. How likely is it a dog's loudest bark is less than 100 decibels? Um, there's a 97.5% chance that that would happen. In other words, this shaded area under the curve is 97.5. And that's it. There's the examples. What did I write about the absolute minimum you need to know? Any question about the empirical rule can be done using either of these two methods. You can do it kind of the longer way I explained in the other video. Probably ideal if you could do that. But if you can, it's okay. Don't feel bad. Don't take a zero on this. Memorize that picture, make some flashcards, and then add up the regions as needed. Um, this method may sacrifice some of the understanding, blah, blah, blah. My advice, only use it if you can't learn the normal way. I guess that's true. Um, that's all I got.